Hello viewers, in the last program we have discussed a problem which is in relation to determination of mode in respect of continuous series and also we have discussed the harmonic mean and uh, geometric mean and they are calculated in respect of some certain circumstances. We have also started discussion of different methods for the measurement of dispersion in which we have discussed so far two methods for measurement of dispersion. First was the range and second was the in quartal range or quartal divisions. Now, in this part of the program, I would like to resume the discussion of methods for measurement of dispersions. First of all, I would like to discuss a problem which is based on determining in quartal range in respect of continuous series. Then, I will be taking up the third method that is for the measurement of dispersion and this is the mean divisions. And we will also discuss the fourth method that is standard divisions and that is for measurement of dispersions. Now, first of all, I would like to discuss a problem which is based on determining the in quartal range in respect of continuous series. Now, calculate quartal divisions and the coefficient of quartal divisions from the following data. Wages in rupees per week. Now, the wages have been given in terms of rupees and these are given in this way less than 35, 35 to 37, 38 to 40, 41 to 43 and over 43. And how many people are getting wages in this uh, class intervals? That is 14, 62, 99, 18 and 7. Now, we calculate quartal divisions on the basis of this problem. Now, wages per week that is less than 35 and total frequency is 14 and 35 to 37 they have got the frequency of 62, 38 to 40 frequency is 99 and so on. Now, first of all in order to calculate quartal divisions we have to calculate cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is nothing but the aggregation of the frequency. The first is 14 then we add 62 to 14 we get 76 then 99 is added to 76 we get 175 and 18 is added to 175 we get 193 and finally, we add 7 to 193 we get 200 and that is cumulative frequencies. Now, what is the formula that is used for calculating quartal divisions? Now, this is q 3 minus q 1 and that is divided by 2. So, we can say that in order to calculate quartal division, first of all we have to find out what is q 3 and q 1, then find the difference and difference is divided by 2. In this way, we will be calculating quartal range or quartal divisions. Now, q 1 is equal to size of n divided by fourth item that is 200. 200 is the cumulative frequency or we can say this is the total frequency and that is divided by 4 we get 50th item or we can say that quartal division lies in uh, 76 and that is the class interval is 35 to 37. Now, we apply this formula q 1 lies in the class 35 to 37 and the formula that is used for calculating q 1 is L plus n divided by 4 minus cumulative frequency divided by f and is multiplied by i. L here means the lower value in of the class interval in which the q 1 lies and n means the total frequency that is 200 and that is divided by 4 we get 50 and cumulative frequency here means the frequency which is preceding the class interval in which q 1 lies and that is 40 and frequency here means the frequency of the class interval in which q 1 lies that is 62 and i is the difference of class interval and that is 2 means 35 to 37 the difference that comes to 2. Now, we get the value of the q 1 35 plus 50 minus 14 divided by 62 and is multiplied by 2. In this way we get 35 plus 1.16 is equal to 36.16. So, this is the value of q 1. Now, we are required to calculate q 3. Now, the formula is size of 3 multiplied by n divided by 4 the item. In this way, we calculate 1 50th item. Now, that lies in 38 to 40 class interval. Now, we apply this formula q 3 is equal to L plus 3 multiplied by n divided by 4 and we deduct C f and divided by f and is multiplied by i. Now, in this case, the 38 is the lower 
value of the class interval in which the q 3 lies and 3 n means 3 is multiplied by n and divided by 4. So, in this way we get 150 C f again that is the cumulative frequency which is proceeding to the class interval in which q 3 lies and frequency means the frequency of the class interval in which q 3 lies and that is 99 and I again is the difference of class interval in which q 3 lies. Now, we substitute the values q 3 is equal to 38 plus 150 minus 76 is divided by 99 and is multiplied by 2. In this way we calculate 38 plus 1.49 and that is equal to 39.49. So, we have calculated q 1 and q 3. So, we can calculate quartal divisions. Now, quartal division is equal to 39.49 minus 36.16 and that is divided by 2 we get 1.67. So, quartal division is equal to 1.67. Now, we calculate coefficient of quartal divisions. Now, the formula that is required for calculating coefficient of quartal division is q 3 minus q 1 and is divided by q 3 plus q 1. So, 39.49 is q 3 minus 36.16 is q 1 then we have the aggregation of q 3 and q 1 that is 39.49 plus 36.16. In this way we calculate 0 0.044. This is considered as coefficient of quartal divisions. Dear friends, we have discussed this problem. This is relation to determining quartal divisions or in quartal range that is for calculating mean divisions. Now, we proceed to discuss the third method that is for calculating that is for measurement of dispersion. This is the mean divisions or average divisions. Now, range and quartal division method do not show the scrutinized around an average. This is one of the limitations with which the second method is suffering. And second is the average divisions and the standard divisions help us in achieving this goal. So, we can say so far as the third and fourth methods are concerned they are very much better than the method that we discussed. The first was the range and second was the in quartal range or quartal divisions. Now, the mean division is the average difference between the item in distribution and the median and mean of that series. Now, so far as the mean division is concerned that can be calculated with the help of mean, mode and median. Normally, median division is used because divisions from median is minimum when signs are ignored. Normally, we calculate mean division with the help of median because in this case we find minimum divisions at the same time in order to calculate divisions we definitely overlook ignore the signs plus and minus. Now, how to compute mean divisions? Now, this formula used for computing the mean divisions. In respect of individual observations this formula is used mean division is equal to summation d m divided by n. Now, this formula is used only when we calculate mean divisions with the help of median. Now, second formula is used when we calculate mean division with the help of mean. So, mean division is equal to summation d x means divisions from x mean and that is divided by n or in case of if we calculate mean with the help of mode then this formula is highly useful. Mean divisions is equal to summation d z and is divided by n. Now, so far as the delta m is concerned that is for divisions from median and delta x bar is concerned that is uh, the symbol of divisions from mean and division z that is division from mode. Now, whenever we have to calculate coefficient of mean then first of all we have to see that uh, whether we have used median, mode and mean for calculating mean divisions. If we have used the median so as to calculate mean divisions then coefficient of mean is calculated with this formula mean division is divided by median or coefficient of mean when the mean division has been calculated with the help of mean. Then this formula is used mean division is divided by actual mean or mean division is calculated when we have calculated mean division with the help of mode. In this way delta z is divided by z. So, these formulas are used so as to find out mean division and coefficient of 
mean deviations. Now, in case of discrete series, how to calculate uh, mean deviation with the help of median? Now, this formula is used for this purpose. Now, summation f d m means that is deviations from median and that is divided by n or if I calculated uh, we can say uh, mean division with the help of mean then this formula is used summation f and we calculate uh, division from we can say mean and that is divided by n. So, we have to find out first of all what is the division from actual mean then that is divided by n and further that is multiplied by f so as to find out the summation and the same way the, this formula is used so as to find out the mean divisions in respect of discrete series if we have calculated mean division with the help of mode. Now, in this case this formula is used summation f division from mode and divided by n. So, these formula used so as to find out mean division in respect of discrete series. Now, in respect of continuous series, now first of all we are required to calculate the mid value. The mid value of class interval is calculated so as to convert continuous series into discrete series and rest process as adopted in discrete series remains the same. So, we can say that in case of continuous series one more effort is required and that is calculating mid value. After that we apply all uh, those formulas which are used in respect of discrete series. Now, we discuss a problem which is based on calculation of mean deviations from median and arithmetic mean. Now, on the basis of the following distribution of marks obtained by 100 students calculate mean deviations from median and arithmetic mean. Now, marks are given marks more than 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75 and 85 and number of students obtain these marks are 100, 97, 89, 74, 54, 29, 19, 10 and 4. Now, in this case since we are not given the class interval. So, first of all it is better that we should form class interval on the basis of the marks obtained by the students are given. So, first of all we have formed class interval that is 5 to 15, the midpoint is 10. Now, the question arises how to calculate midpoint. Now, first of all we add to the summation of 5 and 15 that comes to 20 and that is divided by 2 we get 10. In the same way when we add 15 and 25 we get 40 and that is divided by 2 we get midpoint that is 20. So, this is a process in which we calculate midpoint. Now, frequency is given. Now, initially frequency is 100 but this is a total number of students. So, first of all we have to find out the frequency who have got marks in this way. 5 to 15 and 15 to 25 in this way. So, frequency is third, the number of students are 3 who have got marks that lies between 5 to 15, then 8, 15, 20, 25, 10, 9, 6 and 4. So, number of students are given is 100. After that we have to calculate cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is nothing but the aggregation of the frequency. First is 3, we add 8 to 3 we get 11, then 15 is added to 11, 26 in this way we calculate cumulative frequency. After that we had to have the multiplication of f and x. So, frequency is 3, but midpoint is 10 both are multiplied we get 30 then 160, 450, 800 in this way we calculate the multiplication of f and x and total is 4760. Now, median in this case is size of n divided by 2 to the item and that is size of 100 is divided by 2 or 5th item or we can say this the median lies in the class interval is 45 to 55. So, this is the median group. Now, we apply this formula L plus I is divided by F M minus C and that is equal to 45 plus 10 divided by 25 and we deduct 46 from 50. So, in this way we calculate 45 plus 10 is multiplied by 4 n is divided by 25 or we get 46.6. So, this is the way in which we have calculated median. Now, in this way we are also required to calculate mean. So, for this purpose this formula is used x bar is equal to summation f x means f is multiplied by x and we have got the summation and that is divided by n and that is stands for frequency. So, we have divided 4760 by 100 
So, in this way we calculate uh, mean is 47.6. So, median is 46.6 and mean is 47.6. So, we have completed the half portion for calculating mean deviation from mean and median. Now, in this case the L that is for lower limit of the median class, I definitely that is the difference of class interval of median class, F that is for frequency of the median class and F that is for median number of n is divided by 2 the item and c here means cumulative frequency of the class just preceding the median class. Now, we calculate mean deviations. The marks obtained by the students are given midpoint that we also calculated, frequency that we will also discuss and from me we first of all we have calculated deviations, but in this way we definitely we overlook ignore the plus minus signs. So, 36.6 is the deviations from median. How it is calculated? 46.6 is the median, but at the same time the 10 is the midpoint, the difference is 36.6. Just find out the difference of median and midpoint, but at the same time we have to overlook the signs of plus and minus. So, in this way we have calculated the deviations from median 36.6, 26.6, 16.6 in this way we have calculated deviations from median. Now, total deviation we have calculated when we multiply deviations by frequency. So, 36.6 is multiplied by 3 we get 109.8. After that we multiply 26.6 by 8 we get 212. In this way we have calculated F is multiplied by deviations from median. So, total is 1507.2. After that we have to also calculate deviation from mean and uh, we have to multiply the deviation from mean by the we can say frequency. Then in this way we calculate total deviation is 112.8, 220.8, 264 and 152. In this way the total is 1499.2. Now we apply this formula. Deviation mean is equal to again summation of divisions from median is multiplied by f and divided by n. In this way we calculate 15.07. So, mean division from median is 15.07. Now, with the help of mean we calculate mean division in this way summation of uh, divisions from actual mean and is multiplied by f and is divided by n. We get 1499.2 is divided by 100 we get 14.99. So, mean division from mean is 14.99. Dear friends, this was the third method for measurement of dispersion. Now, we switch over to discuss the fourth method that is standard division for measurement of the dispersion. Definitely, standard division method is superlative is superior to other methods that we discussed earlier. Now, it is an ideal and scientific measures of dispersion which is commonly used in statistics because of two main characteristics. Now, so far as this method is concerned, it has got two unique characteristics. First is divisions are always measured from arithmetic mean, but this is not so in case of mean divisions when this is calculated with the help of mean, mode and median, but this choice is not at all available in respect of standard divisions. And second is algebraic signs plus and minus are not ignored. Definitely taken into consideration at the time of calculating divisions and multiplication of divisions and frequencies. Now, eastern division is the square root of the arithmetic mean of the square of divisions of items from the arithmetic mean. As I told you earlier that so far as the eastern division is concerned, this is based on arithmetic mean and we never use median and mode in this connection. Now, this concept of eastern division was first introduced by Carl Pearson in 1893. Now, what are the formula which are used for calculation of standard divisions? In respect of individual observation, if divisions are taken from actual mean, so we can say the choice is quite open, either we can take our divisions from actual mean or divisions can be taken from assumed mean. Now, in case of when divisions are taken from actual mean, this formula is used. Now, eastern division is equal to root of summation of x square and is divided by n. Now, so far as the 
division is concerned that is calculated with the help of actual mean and the number that is given in the individual observations. If we want to calculate deviations from assumed mean then this formula is used. Now, it is highly useful when actual mean is in fraction. Now, instant deviation is equal to the root of summation d square is divided by n minus summation d square divided by n. So, in this case d is indication of x minus a or a that is for assumed mean n that is for numbers and summation d square that is aggregate of squares of deviations. Now, we discuss a problem which is based on calculating the standard deviation in individual observations. Now, this is a problem. Blood serum cholesterol levels of 10 persons are as under 240, 260, 290, 245, 255, 288, 272, 263, 277 and 251. Now, we solve the problem. Calculation of Western deviations by the assumed mean. Now, x is 240, 260 that is given. After that, we assume the mean that is 264 and find the deviations. And deviation is calculated on the basis of x and assumed mean that is min minus 24, minus 4, plus 26, minus 19, minus 9, plus 24, plus 8, minus 1, plus 13, minus 13. So, difference is plus 1 or we can say the total of plus sign is greater than the total of minus sign and the difference that comes to is plus 1. After that we square the deviations. So, 24 is squared we get 576, then 4 is squared we get 16. In this way all deviations are squared. Then we have the total that comes to 2689. Now, we apply this formula. Eastern deviation is equal to root of summation d square is divided by n minus summation d square divided by n. So, in this case the summation of d square is 2689 and summation d is equal to plus 1 and n is 10. Now, we substitute the values on the basis of the formula given and in this way we calculate 268.9 minus 0 0.01 then we have the root and that is 16.398 this is the standard deviations. So, that we have discussed in respect of individual observation then how to calculate the standard deviation in respect of discrete series. Again we can calculate with the help of actual mean or we can find out with the help of assumed mean. The first formula is standard deviation is the root of summation f x square divided by n x here means x minus x bar x bar that is actual mean and in case of assumed mean then we have to get first of all divisions that is squared and that is multiplied by f then it is divided by n minus summation f d then d c divided by n then we have, have to get the square then we have to get the root in this way we calculate standard deviations. Now, d here means x minus a, a stands for adjunct mean. Now, we discuss a problem which is based on calculating a standard deviation in this discrete series. Now, calculate the standard deviations from the data given below. Size of item is given 3.5, 4.5, 5.5 and 6.5 and frequency is also given. Now, we calculate the external deviations. X means size of item that is 3.5 and 4.5 and so on and frequency is given 3, 7, 22, 60, 85 and 32 and finally 8 and total is 217. Now, we first of all get the deviations that is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0 and plus 1, plus 2 and plus 3. Whenever we have to find out deviations with the help of actual mean, definitely the summation of division will always come to 0. The after that we get F d. F d is calculated on the basis of multiplication of F and d that is 9 minus 14, 22, 0 plus 85 plus 64 and plus 24. Now, this is uh, important to note that in case of standard division method we never ignore the signs of plus and minus. Now, summation of F d that comes to plus 128 after that we square. A square means first of all we have to square the division minus 3 
that is 9 and further this is multiplied by 3 we get 27. After that 2 is a square that we get 4 and 4 is multiplied by 7 we get 28. So, first of all we have to square the divisions then this is multiplied by f in this way we calculate f d square and that is is 362 that is the total of f is multiplied by d square. Now, this formula is used for calculating Eastern derivations in case of discrete series. Now, Eastern derivation is equal to root of summation of f d square divided by n minus summation f f d and that is square and is divided by n. So, f d square is 362, summation f d is 128 and n is 217. Now, we substitute the values as, as per the formula given, we get 362 divided by 217 minus 128 and is divided by 217. After that, this is squared and finally, we have to calculate the root. In this way, we calculate 1.668 minus 0.348 and we get 1.149. This is the Eastern division that we calculated in respect of discrete series. Today in this part of the program, we have resumed the discussion of different methods for measurement of dispersion in which we discuss in quartal range and mean divisions and finally, we have discussed standard divisions. Now, for the discussion of these methods for measurement of dispersions, we have touched upon some problems which are based on determining mean divisions in respect of continuous series. After that, we also discuss two problems in relation to measurement of standard division in respect of individual and discrete series. Thank you.